So, it's here. The most hyped up and promising banner since Hero is finally here. Alchemy Stars probably has one of its best days banner wise in a really long time. So, is it worth rolling on this great banner? And how do I say this? No, it sucks. You actually believed me for a second there, didn't you? Okay, obviously I'm only joking, please don't answer up, okay? It was just a joke. Obviously this banner is great, but how great? Well, we will clear up that question after I quickly thank my channel members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and of course an extra big shout out to the Grand Warlock. Back to these two beautiful characters. And of course, let's start with the a bit more boring character, except if you're a husband lover, then he's probably your wet dream. Of course I'm talking about 5 star Nadine Roy. In my preemptive evaluation video, I already talked quite a lot about him, but how good is he really? Well, let's start with the cons. The by far biggest thing is that sadly his active range at BT0 is only 2 clusters instead of 3 as they actually bamboozled me and I was wrong for definitely the first time and his BT2 is not the beginning point or the point you get at the beginning of the round but instead his active conversion range which is quite a huge blow. That means to get a decent conversion going you basically want to use this active twice on the same spot which means that your global conversion version will take you 3 turns in total, aka 3 points, aka basically the equivalent of a 2 turn CD. And how do I say this? Well, I already speculated in the preemptive evaluation video that he might have around equal heals than Nadine, but sadly, at the same level A3 level 1, EQ10, he heals less than Nadine. So... Not only do you first need to get these bees onto the field, which also can easily die in actual gameplay, like, Eclipsites are really hungry for bees. Like, they are hungry and their main food for today on their menu are bees. And that's not all, you also need to be in their range. At least your chain combo, which is sadly only starting at two surrounding clusters and then goes up at tier 2 and tier 3 to three surrounding clusters. So not only is he quite restricted in a lot of ways, but you also need to be kind of big brain. You need to place these bees down somewhere safe where they can't be easily destroyed and where you can also easily reach them, which is not always that easy of a task. But enough negativity, let's go to the pros, because there's also quite a lot of them. First off, the most obvious thing is, he works quite similar to Novio, where he has a heal and damage in his chain, even though the heal isn't connected to his chain itself, but works through his equipment. We already talked about how it's restricted in range, but most of of the time that doesn't matter as much and obviously this also means that his heal is at a chain of 4 instead of 5 which is kind of the standard. And obviously this also means in results that you don't lose out on too much damage if you are going to use Roy. And the next thing is enabled through the extra point we ignored in the other video. And that's that he can actually use the skill to convert one of the tiles in two surrounding clusters on turn 1, which is pretty good and enables a lot more possibilities. And speaking of his conversion, it's actually quite great. Even though you only have a limited range, it's basically at a 1 turn CD for that limited range and a 2 turn CD for a global range, which is still better than Nadine and basically still one of your best selectile conversion options in Thunder. My first impression verdict for him on day one is still going to be strong. I was very conflicted giving him this rating last video and also this video. There's still a chance he might fall down, but I think he's still good enough. Just giving heals and damage, having a decent quantity but less quality than Nadine is pretty fine. I would just say the rule of thumb is going to be if you need a real dedicated healer, you are still going to use Nadine. If you only need some heals but also want some damage and conversion, then Roy is your boy. But once again, one big thing is, if you want to use him, I will give you a high recommendation to at least try to get BT2, else he is going to be somewhat clunky often. He is still very potent at BT0, but BT2 really, really helps. And now, you know what time it is. 
It's time to bring out the big guns. Yeah, um, not the big guns you were thinking about, okay? Obviously, I'm talking about the newest six-star character, Blue Hero. Um, yeah, uh, Azure. Yeah, sorry, I mistook the name. What can I say? I, and also many others, hyped her up a lot. And not for any dumb reasons. On paper, she looked insane. There were some things that weren't really clear about her skill set. But now, I am enlightened. I played her for a bunch of hours, so now I can tell her how I truly feel about her. And obviously, once again, we're going to start off with the cons. And the first thing is something that I sadly completely ignored while <laughs> reading the text, because it was quite obvious based on the wording. The Mirage strike only hits once per enemy, it's basically a sniper-like ability. Which also means that the Mirage Strike is not going to surprise you with any big numbers. And the second biggest problem thing about her is that you need to be in the range of her Mirage for high enough damage. Obviously, while she might have many big things, like her rifles, her attack stat isn't one of these. So you want to really be in the range of the Mirage, which is reduced if you don't have BT3, but that's normally not the biggest problem if you just uh, play properly and don't have any skill issues. And that's it. There's no real cons besides these two while using Azure. I'm not kidding, there really isn't. In fact, let me tell you, Azure is actually better than I thought. It's dumb, it sounds insane, if you saw the other video you know how much I praised her, and to think that she's actually even more busted, which makes sense based on her art, but besides that, um, yeah, she is really, really strong. Why? First off, preemptive is on BT0, no words. Being able to use that strong of a skill directly on turn 1 is insane. Next thing, I was actually right with my best case scenario. You can straight up choose the effect you want the Mirage to do every single round. I was also right that you can only have one of these things, but that doesn't matter at all. You have a one turn CD conversion for one tile globally, and on the next turn where the skill is still on cooldown, you can just either convert again or use the damage skill. Depends on if you actually use the tile it converted or uh, if you didn't. In that case you just use the damage. In the next turn you can just either replace the old mirage with a new one that has a better placing or just use the damage again or the conversion again. Or you can just use the strike but this time on the same place to trigger the enhanced mirage strike. Because this thing does insane damage. Even though this is still single target damage it's nothing to scoff at. Like that damage is kind of insane. Which means the normal Mirage Strike, not the best. The Enhanced Mirage Strike, absolutely insane. And while we're already talking about damage, not only does this Enhanced Mirage Strike deal insane single target damage, she herself does it as well. Because of her constant double chain. Having your Mirage always copy your <laughs> tier 1 chain leads to insane damage numbers on multi and single tile. I tested her versus the best single target water character, which in my eyes is Fleur, and she is on par with him. He is like BT4 or something, and BT0 Azure almost reaches his damage on a single target burst team, thanks to her chain being so dumb crazy with her mirage, and it also works obviously with Hydrat, which means you can have 4 chains in one turn. Absolutely dumb damage, obviously also works on multi-tile, and let me tell you, <laughs> I tried her versus Regal. Regal is by far one of the strongest detonators on multi-tile in the game. And you know what? She is on par with him. Depending on how many hits you actually have on the target, she even can do more damage in a burst team than Regal. That's just dumb. This doesn't only mean that Azure is basically a blue hero. If you compare her to Hero, which is dumb I know, but just to make it more clear, Hero is an insane damage dealer but not as insane as the best one in Forest, which would be Aria, maybe even Yao, but <laughs> in this case, Azure is on par with Regal, on par with Fleur, and she also has a similar insane conversion. One turn CD for a one tile select conversion. No words, no words. And while she 
she might power creep a lot of detonators in water right now and also in future. She thankfully also works really well with some of them. For example, Bethel with Azur is an insane team because Azur is basically Bethel with Hero Mixed on crack. That's a really, really nice to play team. Water might actually be one of my most favorite elements thanks to Azur. I don't know what to say. If I had to summarize her, insane damage on multi and single tile, insane range thanks to her mirage copying her chain, she has a one turn CD, one tile select conversion that can also deal damage in the downtime. Because she has thankfully preemptive strike, she is on par with hero's conversion of two tiles in three turns. Obviously I do have to say, BT3 hero is still the king, but when we are talking about BT0 characters, Azur is probably the most broken one in the game right now. So. What can I say? She's obviously core, no questions asked. Azur is by far the most broken character since Zero, but at BT Zero she is the best package in the whole game you can get. You don't need breakthroughs, you just need that one Azur copy. And now, we come to the biggest question when it comes to this banner. Should you roll? And obviously... It's a yes. Honestly, I would call this banner a must roll. It's basically the second must roll banner since Hero. But let me rephrase it. Because I know a lot of people are very worried about the anniversary being so close. Reinhardt might be up on the horizon. But let me explain my thoughts behind this. Right now, you have a banner with two really good characters, one of them being one of the best characters in the game, if not the best at BT0, and you can roll on this right now and get it right now. The anniversary is still a bit away and we don't know what we will get. It might be Reinhardt, it might not be Reinhardt, it might be a similar situation to Bethlehem. You might need two, three, six breakthroughs to make the character good. Obviously, it might also be the most broken character in the game, we don't know. So. The facts are, we don't know what anniversary we'll have, but we do know what we have right in front of our eyes. An insane character. So, honestly I would tell you to roll. If you don't want to, that's your thing. I know saving, as especially as free to play for anniversary, is always a big thing. Keep in mind you will also get a lot of freebies for anniversary, so it might not hurt to at least try to sack her, but yeah. If you're a water main, it is definitely a must roll banner. If you're thinking about playing water in the future, it's a must roll banner. If you're thinking about rolling for Bethlehem on anniversary, it's also a must roll banner. If you don't like water, sure, I guess you can skip. But if you care about meta or gameplay or <laughs> even interesting artworks, I would say roll. If you're still not convinced, then want a more in-depth review on her. You can wait for that, it's going to happen probably around early next week, maybe even on Sunday already. I will take my sweet time to truly test her out. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with her, and I hope you do too. That was all from me, have a nice day, and see you next time.